Well, I'm sure we've all done this. We browse the internet for a product we want, a ticket or a DVD. We put in our credit card details and just before sending them off, we pause and think, is this really safe? What if someone was to intercept the wireless network or the cable running down the street and steal my credit card details? Well, it is safe. And the reason it's safe is because of prime numbers. For centuries, mathematicians have been wrestling with prime numbers. Those in the red corner have been searching for larger and larger primes, while those in the blue corner have been looking for ways of breaking numbers down into their prime factors. In this professional knowledge program for maths teachers, we too wrestle with prime numbers and show how their use in cryptography algorithms help to keep our money safe. Mathematicians have been fascinated by prime numbers for thousands of years and it was back in 300 BC that Euclid came up with his fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Every positive integer greater than 1 can be expressed uniquely as a product of primes, apart from the rearrangement of terms. For example, we could take the first few prime numbers, which are 2, 3 and 5, and we could multiply some of them together. For example, 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, and this is 60. Now, what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic tells us is that this was the only way we could get 60, except that we could have swapped some of the numbers around. So, for example, this is the same as 2 times 3 times 5 times 2, but apart from that, that's the only way that we can get 60. After his lecture, Dr. Stevens and his colleagues take their exploration of primes a bit further. So one of my students asked today why one wasn't a prime number, hmm. and it's an interesting question. I mean, it's almost by convention, isn't it? I mean, one is divisible only by one itself, and until the 19th century, I think people considered one to be a prime number. The, the reason is, is to do with breaking down uh, numbers. So we can break down numbers into prime numbers, and they're the smallest pieces we can break them into. And you can do that in essentially only one way. So, uh, of course, you can swap the factors, but apart from that, there's only one way you can do it. But if one were a prime number, then you could put a one in there, or as many ones as you like, and then there would be many different ways of factorising the same number into primes. Wow, so that reminds me of atoms, because atoms are the building blocks of the universe, and this seems to be that primes are the building blocks of numbers. So we have our building blocks, prime numbers, and there are infinitely many of them. And although they start small, they can build up to enormous things. So mathematicians started playing with them. They would multiply them together to create new numbers. So 3 times 5 gave 15, and 17 times 23 gave 391. But how, once you've got these new numbers, like 15 or 391, could someone else come along and break them down into their prime factors? Well, there's still a little way to go yet before I can show you how prime numbers help keep your credit card details secure. But factorising is a key part to that solution.